you able to see my screen yeah i can see it hello everyone i am darshan vandra and i am associate software engineer at red hat with me yep uh, i am shubham mathur i work as a so associate software engineer at red hat and today we'll be talking about code ready dependency analytics it's an open source plugin which provides smart security for your stack yep let's move yeah yeah so the agenda for the session is today we'll try to discuss what are the problems which are faced by developers uh, while developing a, an application so like uh, we we mostly fall into problems such as uh, what are the dependencies for my uh, stack what are the things uh, we should use so we'll be talking about all that stuff uh, other than that we'll be talking about what is code ready dependency analytics extension uh, then we'll give you a small demo uh, which will be based on based out on the same extension and then uh, there there'll be a slide which will show you how to get this extension so the best part of everything is it's an open source so definitely it will attract you guys a lot <laughs> so let's see what what we have for you yep so uh, this slide shows like what problems uh, a developer faces during application development phase so mostly when when we are developing an application so in my in my uh, experience i always face this issue like what is the latest version of a dependency am i using the latest version or not and sometimes i like to uh, visit the github pages like whether what is a github stats how many stars are to this dependency what is the license uh, used by this dependency and stuff like that now the second concern comes mostly is is my is my application secure and this is very burning topic right now right so uh, this comes a lot like is my application secure am i developing an application which is hack proof or is it which is vulnerable proof so for that we we dig deeper and we understand that is 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 our dependencies uh, hack proof are they uh, like whether whether a person can hack them or whether they are vulnerable or stuff like that so these are these are things which come into our brain right uh, the, the 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 third thing which we see is the license like what type of a license we should use for our stack right so we we go through the uh, uh, content and we understand like okay this could be a possible license or this we can use and stuff like that but there is no uh, place where we could uh, like put our stack and get get an information which type of license we can use right and at the same time in this in this scenario when when npm is crossing 1.5 million dependencies definitely there comes something comes into our brain like what and which dependency is best suited for us like which one to use which is the current burning dependencies uh, for this type of an stack so these are some things uh, which a developer mostly uh, uh, sees in day to day uh, work right uh, these are some problems which uh, which a developer faces right so uh, why why am i discussing this about this is this is kind of uh, this the base on which our crda platform works upon so that's why we are talking about the problems we will we'll give a a little bit in depth about these problems and then we'll move on to what how crda solves them yep next slide darshan yeah so here you can see uh, like how the dependencies are increasing with time right so we can see from 2011 to 2020 20 npm has grown like anything like it's a, it has beaten like anything the number of dependencies which npm is uh, taking care of is it's a, it's a lot right so this is this is where our first problem comes in right then when there is uh, plenty of uh, dependency and you don't know uh, much about the dependencies uh, so you need a platform which gives you informations about the dependencies like the uh get up uh, stats the license and stuff like that right what is the latest version uh, so that's that's uh, that's what i'm trying to make you guys uh, from this slide like the dependencies are rising right and information about them is something uh, which should be there uh, in this current scenario correct so yeah next slide yeah now the second thing uh you can see it is it is a graph from nvd itself 
so it says that from 2001 till 2022 uh, how many dependencies fall in whether in, in which severity section so this this is a, a severity distribution over time so uh, simply it gives like how many dependencies yeah how many dependencies fall in a high severity section how many fall in a medium severity and how many fall in a low severity so these bar we can definitely understand like uh, in in history like in 2001 2002 the dependencies falling inside vulnerable high vulnerabilities were pretty low uh, as well as medium were pretty low but right now the scenario has uh, changed completely we can see the red bar is uh, significantly very high and the green following it right so this green means highly uh, severity uh, severe vulnerability and medi uh, medium red means like a medium severity right so definitely there is vulnerabilities out there and we need to secure our applications right so this 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 chart gives a clear indication right that there is a requirement of security for your stack yeah uh, next slide session other than that uh, as we know that there are about uh, more than I would say 2500 different open source licenses, right? And each license has a compat. Each license can have a compatibility issue with other licenses, which other dependency licenses, which you are using, right? If you are using multiple dependencies, right? They could internally have license conflict, right? Along with that, there is a, there is a scenario when you want uh, to know which uh, type of license you should use for your stack. So these are some things which uh, which uh, we definitely face, right? Yeah. Uh, next slide, Darshan. Yeah. So this is uh, this is from npm and the next from uh, Python, uh, PyPy. So this shows that what are the trending dependencies uh, in current time, right? So you can see that most dependent upon packages like what are the dependencies which are used being used most uh, in the recent past few months right so like as we saw in the previous slide the dependencies are rising and new dependencies come uh, every next uh, quarter right every new month every i would say every uh, a week a new dependency comes up right so how do you stay updated right how do you get to know what are uh, an alternative of a dependency which is uh, which people are liking a lot and uh, which can be integrated with your stack, right? So these are some things which which uh, CRDA uh, tackles, right? These are few problems which C CRDA takes care of, which helps developer to get get your stack uh, as fit as possible to the current uh, uh, requirements. Uh, yep, current scenarios. Yep. So yeah, on the next slide, I'll I'll uh, I'll explain you what CRDA is. So, the, uh, this uh, this CRDA is a is is an extension, a dependency analytics extension, which we can install in our uh, IDEs, and then it then it helps us to tag, uh, fight uh, all the problems which we discuss. So, this CRDA is hosted on OpenShift, and it provides uh, services such as uh, analyzing all the security vulnerabilities associated with your stack. It analyzes uh, what what type of a license you should use, checks the compatibility, whether uh, which license is best suited for you, and its recommendation engine is so uh, superb that it even gives you the companion packages like what other packages you can use, or what other customer uh, application stack uh, people, what other people are using, and you can like simply have an idea and then you can uh, take it in your stack as well, right? So it, it even gives you the GitHub stats of the newly recommended uh, uh, dependencies, right? So this is this is how uh, the CRDA platforms helps in fighting those problems, right? So currently, CRDA supports JavaScript, uh, Java, and Python. So we we near future we'll be coming up with GoLang and uh, uh, more languages. So currently we support JavaScript, Java, and Python. Now you may be wondering like how do you identify these vulnerabilities, right? So these vulnerabilities are uh, like we uh, like they are based out on the database by NVD uh, and now we have in a close partnership with SNCC as well. So we even have the support from SNCC 
to view the uh, most most uh, advanced vulnerability reports and most advanced uh, vulnerability details about your uh, stack. Other than that, we, we even use DPI model to identify the uh, recommendations. Along with that, we also use the, uh, yeah, that's all I could uh, say right now, that we use uh, deep uh, machine learning uh, AI-based algorithm to tackle all these problems. Yeah, for uh, the next slide, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's go so, to, uh, yeah. Take, uh, yeah. The demo. next slide is demo. I'll I'll hand it over to Darshan. He'll give you more uh, in depth about uh, the uh, dependency analytics tool uh, via the demo itself. Yeah. Go ahead, Darshan. Everyone, Darshan. So you can see, I have the dependency analytics plugin installed in my VS Code extension. Let's see how. So as soon as you will open a manifest file in your dependency analytics plugin installed in VS Code extension, it will pick, it will quickly scan your application stack and it will flag those vulnerabilities which are vulnerable. So let's see here. And you can see the markdown version 2.2.0 is vulnerable with the two known security vulnerabilities with one security advisories. And the security advisories are the security advisories figured out by the SNP and it is only unique to the SNP. It is not publicly available. We will also have the exploit vulnerable and this also shows the highest severity of the vulnerability. Here we can show it's a high. You also see the recommendation version, which recommendation version to use to avoid this. Let's see how it looks like. Overview summarize message. It also provides the summarize message is 1747 dependencies. Out of that 11, it has a non security vulnerabilities and one which is having a security advisory. Also provide a quick fix. See how quick fix works. So, in this diagnostic, we can also do a quick fix for this. Can see the version has changed from 2.2.0 to 2.3.9. While we have a new page, and you can see now this 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 2.3.9 is no more vulnerable, and you can see the notification updated notification, which will have a nine security vulnerabilities. There won't be any security issues as of now. So now we can also generate the dependency analytics report by right clicking here and you can also click on this button as well. Now let's go how the dependency analytics report will look like. It will have a detailed, detailed analysis of the vulnerability. So for the dependency analytics report, we have a four cards. First card will have a security issues which will have the detailed analysis of the each vulnerabilities and it also provides the vulnerabilities with the constitutive dependencies. And second card, which has a dependency details, it receives all the dependency details with the GitHub statistics and vulnerability details, license details, and all. And the other, and the other tab is licenses tab, which will show like which are the license, which is the, which are the, which are the suggested license for your application tab. So here you can see there are some unknown packages which can use the license with the BBS like. And, and the other one is the add-on step, which shows the add-on information about the packages which you can use with your application stacks. So you can see like uh, NumPy, you can use it with this current application stack. And now let's see how the detailed vulnerability information will look like. So for security card, we have a tool. Uh, Tabs over here. One will have a commonly known vulnerabilities, and one will have a vulnerabilities unique to SNP. Let's see how it looks like. So we can see here like PyYaml package with the current version 5.2 is vulnerable, and the severity of the vulnerability is high. We can also see the SNP link to the vulnerability, and the recommendation version is 5.2.1. Same we can also see for the 
transitive vulnerabilities. So for the code call, you can see there are two vulnerabilities and uh, there are also transitive packages, which is which is a URL lib. URL lib is a transitive packages which is being used uh, inside the as a code call. It is also has a vulnerability. It says this is a high one, high severity. To see the more information with the known exploit, publicly known exploit and the security advisories, you need to this link. You can see Markdown as a one security advisory, which is unique to SNP, which is not publicly available as of now. Yeah, you can go to the sign up to the SNP and uh, can generate the, you can create a new account for the SNP. Right. As of now, you can, this is the sign up page from the SNP. You can sign up here. Yeah, As you can see I have signed up for this link. You can also get the Ending page from this link. It shows the uh, application token. So basically, we can copy the SNP token from there and enter in our uh, dependency analytics plugin. Yeah. We enter the SNP token in our dependency analytics plugin. Let's put the click button. You can see as of now we are unregistered and yeah and as soon as our token is validated we convert it to the registered one after registering we will able to see the be able to see the exploit also so this one now that we has not defined any exploit as of now we can go forward we can see the vulnerability with the code code which has the exploit of proof of concept which is publicly known and also in the transitive, you can see the URL lib with the version 1.24.1, which has the aspect of high with this particular vulnerability. We are also able to see the security advisories associated with SNP, which also says that the expert is as a proof of concept, which is known as SNP. By clicking on this link, you can also go to this SNP website to get the more information about the vulnerability. Yeah. Here is the detailed information on the SNP website for the packages which are vulnerable with the SNP activated security advisor. Yeah, that's all pretty much. Um, right? Yeah, we can also um, reload this uh, component analysis message which will also show the expert information so yeah, now we can see here it has the one exploit on all of The exploit details you normally see after registering this link. That's it pretty much from my side. Let's go back to the slide. Yeah. And the next slide, yeah. So in the in the, this user management with this link, which is just going to be released in the next week, is the version 0 0.2.0. And in the near term, we are also going to support the Golem ecosystems. And we are we are also going to work on the user metrics with the telemetry data, which will help our users with the better experience and also for us to improve for the better experience of the user. And in the mid term, we are also going to integrate this RDA platform with the OpenShift console, with the other ID extension. We are also going to support the our stack report with the Get brain IDs extensions. The long term, we are also planning to support other programming languages like PHP, Rust, and we are also planning to support our the IDE platform with the same with the same features on the CI/CD platforms also. Go to the next slide. Yeah, so how you can get the CRDA plugin? You can get the CRDA plugin from the VS Code extension marketplace. 
as well as is available in the Eclipse stream. We are also supporting the component analysis in the JetBrains ecosystem in the JetBrains marketplace. Here is the link for the CRD integration with the Snake Intel and MongoDB database. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Patience and answers.